Hey, Dr. Knight here, and welcome to Steve Jackson's Sorcery Part 4, and today, let us continue with the tragedy that is me trying to play this game and completing it. So, we're going to do per usual... Actually, I'm going to see if I can buy some food. Not that it'll save us from dying, but it'll at least... Let's see, I'm just going to sleep here. We know this is bad. Only a single... Let's let's drink the potion. Alright. And dream. Look at that. Complete stamina. You died again and found no clues. I want to see if I can find some food. Let's, nope, don't want to cast a spell. Nope, nope, nope. Look around. Alright, blah, 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 blah. Make a move. We get to the market, yes. Okay, if I can buy some food to hold on to and have some rations, that would be golden. Alright, so we've done this before, so I'm not going to read a bunch. The stalls, you'd think, are where the food is at. Alright, we've got the peddler, the tents. Maybe the tents. What does a peddler do? Do, do they peddle food or just, like, random wares? Fortune teller, the hawker, no, 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 let's go back to the stalls. Go to the peddler because I don't want the weapons dealer, I don't think. Alright, junk refuse and memorabilia. Let's see. Why are you selling junk? He cackles, which ends in a tremendous coughing fit. Oh, you know, another person's treasure, right? Let's see, some of these can be used for magic. I'm no sorcerer, just a man with a good eye for value. I have learned that there are those out there who know a worthy purchase when they see it. Let's see what he's got here. Hold back mirror, giant to some glue. I could do the potion. Okay. Yeah, this guy's too expensive. I remember this guy now. Yep, yep, way too expensive. Let's leave. So there's there's like no food to buy here, right? What do you have? Let's see. Rod sword. 25. No, okay. Well, yeah, see, this is the issue. There's like no food around here. I cannot purchase food anywhere. Let's see what the hawker, the fortune teller doesn't help us. We've done that before. The hawk, we've done all this before, I just can't remember. Damn the wonder stone is see. Oh, yeah, this thing. No, no, no. Alright. Let's go back to the square because I can't leave anywhere out of here. I can't go through this little. Alley. I have to go back here and then go to the west side. Alright, let's keep going. No. We're just gonna keep going. I'm not going to do this monastery thing again. We've done that. Been there, done that. I've been a monk for a while. It was fun. Don't need to do it anymore. I know where I want to go. And that is where we're going to go. And it's this way. Apparently it's north now, even though this direction was previously west. I guess going down this way is west, and now that way is north. Tis fine, tis fine. Alright, so this time we're going to try going through this tower and up this path right here. Look some sand. We keep grabbing sand. I don't know what I'm doing with it. I'm just grabbing it. So we're going to go into this tower here. It's already nighttime. Alright, I'll start reading once we get into this tower. But I'm just kind of zooming through here because we've, we've done this. I think we've done this tower before too. Oh, is this the sh- wait, okay. The path across the water ends outside the next tower and despite there being a door, you cannot go further. It's surrounded by a curious shimmering shield. You run your hands over the smooth force field. It is definitely magical in nature. It has the subtle give and deep strength of a force field bubble. But how is it so large? And how has it lasted for so long? And who is casting it? Yeah, well, okay. We've done this before. There is a table in what appears to be a small pile of yellow sand. And I don't think we can get through this, as far as I can tell. Well, let's see what kind of spell we can do. Maybe there's a spell to counteract it, but I don't think so. Quicksand. Do you think quicksand 
Let's try it. I don't even know. Yeah, okay. You wind the stars into order around you, scattering sand around the base of the tower, but no whirlpool forms. Rather, the force field begins to shimmer and then to steam and smoke, and finally it disappears. The tower is now open for you to explore. A counter spell, then? So, the spell of the whirlpool opposes the enchantment of the force field. What? Uh, whatever. Okay, so Foff and Mud are counter spells. There's not nothing to stop you going inside the tower. What was it that was being so fiercely protected? Ooh, my curiosity is piqued. The inside of the tower is Spartan. In the middle sits a table on which a piece of paper lies. A pile of yellow sand is scattered around the table's feet. The paper is littered with scrawled notes, a few simple star geometries as an acolyte or as any acolyte of magic might learn, and the beginnings of a technical discussion of counter magic. The paper continues with sketchy detail, though an interesting conclusion. Counter magic is a fact of the universe, thoroughly proven. There is no magic, no matter how strong, which cannot be countermanded if correctly identified. Even the great artifact itself, once thoroughly understood, can be overcome. Time to move on. Is that a clue, maybe? Hmm. Don't know. Alright, night has fallen. You need to rest, especially on an empty stomach. How is it nighttime already? You cross the waters and push your way inside the crumbling tower, without knowing what you might find. The room you find is filled with of statues frozen in various poses, and I see hush fills the air. Is this, uh, is this is a gallery of some sort? Not gonna end well, it never does. You step further into the room. There is no furniture, and from the dust it seems no one has been here in a long while. Statues make the room hard to navigate. They cluster and clutter the floor. You slip this way and that between the statues. The detail on them is extraordinary. Their bodies are exquisitely, prosaically posed. Their faces seem soft enough to stroke. Whoever sculpted them was a rare talent. You browse the statues themselves next. There are old men, young women, children. Their expressions are a mixture of hope, fear, confusion, a whole collection of experience. Some are oddly mundane. One has an unstruck match sticking out from under his shoe that he is in the process of bending down to collect. The eyes of the statue seem to follow you as you move. Well, I didn't really I liked everything up until that sentence. I'm not going to sleep here. I'm going to become a statue or something. You make your way across the room, looking for a way forwards. And there is one, but a statue blocks it neatly. It has been posed as though racing for the door. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. The statue in the doorway is of a middle-aged woman. One hand is raised in the air, and her face tilts upward, as though she was holding up and examining an object that is no longer there. The statue is exquisitely done, including fine details such as eyelashes and a lined face. Someone must have labored long on this. But wait, did one of the statues move? You grasp the statue and heave, but it does not budge. After a few moments of strain, you step back. You feel the coldness on your arms. Oh no. Oh no. Experimentally, oh no. You grasp one of the statue's fingers and with some effort snap it off. A strange smell fills your nostrils. Oh... At first glance, it is it is ordinary as the statue. What? At first glance, it is as ordinary as the statue, but it smells terrible. You flip it around to discover the core of the statue is not stone, but flesh and bone. Barf. Look at the finger statue. You examine the statue itself and see a thin shard of bone sticking from where you broke the finger. A woman's corpse is trapped inside the statue. Was she dead before being entombed so? The entire room full of such grisly prisoners? Uh, let's just get out of here. Corpse, the corpses stare at your back as you leave. Yeah, they're all alive. Let's just go the other way. <laughs> so, let's go the other way. Wait, the shield is returned? Alright. So we know that our mud spell can counteract it, so long as I can do it still. And I didn't use all my sand. Alright. Nothing to keep you here, let's go this way.
As you step outside, the stone finger in your... I'm still holding it. <laughs> ...in your hand turns a pink color and then turns gray and soft. It has changed to a finger of flesh. You toss it aside in horror. The moon moves slowly across the dark sky. You enter the next tower nervously. A feeling of safety descends on you like a cloak. This is as though you have been standing in a storm and now have walked into its eye. Space feels protected, simple, calm. Yeah, let's just sleep here. Why not? Sitting down your pack, or setting down your pack, you try to stretch out despite the wind. You have eaten nothing today, but you have no rations to ease your hunger. You close your eyes and let your tiredness overtake you. You seem guarded here, and you do not dream. Sleep will not heal you if you have not eaten. I know. Found no clues. I've been having productive, productive days. You wake feeling refreshed and calm. Nothing in this protected space has changed. That's good. You look around the empty space but find nothing, until in one corner you discover a small etching on the floor. It reads simply, Can't see me here. Oh, can't I? You open your arms to cast a spell but find nothing. It is as though you stand below an empty spot in the heavens, if such a thing is even possible. At any rate, you are quite without magic here. There is nothing stopping you from moving on in any direction, but as soon as you step outside, you feel the clouds of Mompeng gathering overhead once more. There is a path to the south, but it has crumbled into ruin a short way along. A walkway leads off to the east. How would... Wait. Okay, so north is like off to the... Okay, that's weird. Whatever, who cares. What is that sound? Okay, you make your way across a stone walkway, arching high into the air above the swirling waters that pool below until you reach the next curious tower. The early morning sun makes the air glow. This tower contains a single bare room. There is no furniture, but a rancid stench fills your nostrils. I have a feeling we're going to have to battle something here. You search around, checking for traps or switches. The stench in the room is making your eyes spin, and then you take one step towards the center of the room, and then the floor disappears. Falling! Your arms flail as you tumble down. You hit a stone floor, bruising your sides somewhat. Above, the light of the room filters down, showing sheer high walls. You have fallen into a pit. What's more, the smell is even worse down here. Following an instinct, you draw your sword as you examine your surroundings. The smell makes you stagger. Looking around, you see you are in a wide pit, with walls reaching far above your head. The pit is dark, with the edges in shadow. The smell is so powerful, it is hard to concentrate. Tears are welling up in your eyes. There is a small bundle near the center of the pit, but before you can consider it too closely, something moves. Somewhere in the shadows. Let's just go for it. You rush into the shadow, but there is nothing there. You hear scuffling to your left. Perhaps you simply imagined it. Alright, let's go here. Fine. You walk towards the bundle, weak from the smell. You squat for it, only to freeze. A growl comes from the shadows and a large beast emerges. A skunk bear. The beast rears, its thick striped tail quivering and razor claws displayed. You draw your blade and level it at the creature. The monster roars, then two more walk into view. The proximity of the beast causes the smell to worsen. Your head swims and limbs droop. Really? Is that bad? You scoop up the bundle, narrowly avoiding a vicious swipe. The smell is making your eyes blur. How many skunk bears are there now? You take what little time you have to unwrap the cloth. Inside is a strange collection of objects, as though some curious religious traveler had died down here. A white wax candle, a tinderbox, and a scrap of paper. You cast your eyes over the scrawled poem. The first is of fire, the second of stone, the third is unseeable, the fourth is unknown. The bears are lumbering even closer. Fire, stone, unseeable, unknown. Let me actually, I have a piece of paper here, so let me just do this. Fire, stone, unseeable, unknown. I wonder if these are spells. I have a fire ball spell, so let's see. And I don't see the F. I don't see the F. Wait, wait. I thought I saw an F. Did I see it? There it is. Oh, that is not the... What? 
Oh, I see. So they're just... Oh, interesting. So what do we have here, then? We have... Huff is for wind. Nope. Create stench? Okay. <laughs> That'll not help anybody here. Talk with animals. Do you think... If I don't have a fire thing, I'm going to do yap. I don't think I have a fire thing. Control non-intelligent creatures. I could do that, but I'd be interested to see if I could talk to them. Could be interesting. Hover in the air. That might help too. Hmm, maybe not talking to them. That's lightning. That's not fire. Yeah, I don't... Let's just do this. Reaching up to the stars, you create the magic, and the medallion begins to glow as you rise gently up into the air. You float up and out of the pit, landing safely on the edge. The skunk bears roar with primal fury. Your weight returns, and you gently uh, you settle gradually back down to the ground. Yo, I'm not going to hurl myself down there. Thankfully, there's enough space around the outside of the pit to edge carefully around. Nice. I found one new clue, so let's take a look at this. Inner college poem. The first is of fire, the second of stone, the third is unseen, the fourth is unknown. Fire, stone, unseen, known. Found a glyph in the burnt tower. Oh! Okay. Unseeable is the third glyph. Tower of skeletons, huh. That is very convenient that the burnt tower is this. So, stone and then unknown? Or maybe where the glyph. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Skeletons are in Glyph 4, so I'm, I'm looking for stone and unseeable. If I understand this, I don't know how this works. Interesting. Okay. But with this massive heartbeat in my ear, I think this is a good place to stop and we'll continue. So we've gotten a little farther than we have before. And we'll try to see if we can make, make it through the rest of these towers here. Um, I'll go up this way and we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out next time. So uh, maybe we're making progress. It's hard to tell. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. I hope you have a good one. Take care. Bye.